Thanks so much for joining us today on The Bright Side. On our last program, we were talking about slowing down brain frequencies. The brain is emitting waves in a certain frequency, cycles per second, brain waves per second, and faster brain waves, faster cycles per second, if you will, emission of brain waves, brain energy, is associated with problem solving, day-to-day -day life, and it's also associated with anxiety. It's also associated with jitteriness. It can also be associated with depression. So learning to slow down brain frequency, and there's lots of ways to do it, it can be really, really important for accessing the healing, the, the built-in healing abilities of the body, and also for just calming things down, for lightening up, for relaxing. There's a, rela a very important relationship between alpha waves and relaxation, and the relaxation nervous system that we talk about all the time on this program. The parasympathetic nervous system. The relaxation nervous system, which is the part of the nervous system, the part of our bodies that are, are uh, that we're supposed to be running under. We're supposed to be running under parasympathetic relaxing energy most of the time. It's only when a saber-toothed tiger comes into our neighborhood or, or, or we're about to be killed by a wild animal or some kind of disaster is about to strike that the sympathetic, the stress nervous system is supposed to kick in. That's why nature doesn't consider it to be a problem when the digestive system shuts down, the immune system slows down, healing slows down. When uh, uh, circulatory energy or blood energy is diverted from the from the, uh, the thinking and creative centers in the front of the brain to the reptilian brain, the survival brain. The body doesn't consider that to be significant because it only expects to be in this situation for quick emergencies, for maybe seconds or a minute. But we have structured, well, human beings and their infinite wisdom have structured, have, have built an entire culture dedicated almost for, you know, not specifically dedicated, but essentially dedicated to activating the emergency response system. We are all running on emergency energy. We're all running on sympathetic nervous system energy. This is why the digestive system shuts down and we end up with digestive problems. This is why blood vessel, the, the circulatory system reroutes blood to the, to the legs by shunting and shutting down vasculature. And this is why we suffer from hypertension and high blood pressure. This is why our immune system is suppressed, and we're all, so many of us are dealing with uh, immune problems, uh, autoimmune diseases, as well as cancer itself. Blood sugar changes are affected by activation of this sympathetic nervous system, and again, this is one of the reasons why we're dealing with uh, diabetes and blood sugar problems. Healing slows down, and this is why people suffer from slow healing. This is where degenerative disease comes from. It's all the manifestation of this societal, cultural activation of our stress nervous systems. We're not supposed to be running on sympathetic nervous system energy. Hot flashes, menopause. These are also uh, the signs of menopause, the jitteriness, the insomnia, infertility, libido issues. Almost everything we deal with from a health perspective as a culture are linked to activation of the sympathetic stress nervous system, chronic, long-term activation of this stress nervous system, thus the importance of learning to relax, learning to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, learning to slow down brain waves from the high frequency beta waves that are coming out at 14 to 40 or so cycles per second to lower frequency, alpha and theta waves, all the healing mechanisms for relaxation nervous system, for the, uh, associated with the relaxation nervous system will kick in when we slow down our brain waves. Slow breathing will slow down brain waves. Hot showers will do it. I was talking to a guy yesterday, uh, I was talking to a gentleman yesterday at a radio interview and he said whenever he's stressed out, he just goes and takes a nice hot shower. He, he actually had some mental health problems. He had to check himself in to a uh, mental health facility. He told me on the air or, or during my interview, he says that hot showers were way better for him than anything they gave him at the mental health facility, than any prescription drugs that they gave him at the health, a mental health facility. Just taking a hot shower, hot tubs, any natural rhythms, natural sounds can all activate relaxation, relaxing alpha brain waves. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. I want to encourage you to check out my blog, PharmacistBen.com, and also my truth videos. I have a new skincare, skin health products. I call them, I'm calling it skin health because it's really about the, uh, the health of the skin, not the care of the skin. These new products will be out here mm, probably in the next week or two, maybe, maybe two weeks or something along those lines. Uh, we're shooting some video today for the website. 
They're going to be skin health products, addressing the health of the skin. My whole take on skin care, and I've been doing it for a long time, 30 years, 32 years since I started formulating skincare products, and I've learned a lot. One of the things I've learned is that the health of the skin is what makes the skin beautiful. For so many years, a century, a century and a half, pretty much, since the late 1800s, skin products have been about wax, coating the skin with wax, and then you rub your finger on it, you think you're moisturized. You're not moisturized, you're waxerized, you're slickerized. You created a slick sensation on your skin, and we somehow have been conditioned or hypnotically entranced to believe that that's moisture. It's not moisture. There's no skincare products that are moisture because moisture is water. In order to address the health, the, the beauty of the skin or the softness of the skin or the hydration of the skin, you got to nutriate it. And that's what the skin, uh, the Truth Skin Health products are going to be all about. Keep listening to this program and to the GCN network. We'll be running commercials as well and tell you how, to order, how, how you can order some of those products. Anyway, if you're interested in learning about the truth about skincare, you can head over to my Facebook page, The Truth with Ben. We've got videos up there. Lots of videos, lots of little blurbs and tips and ideas about how you can take care of your skin. A lot of you guys are Facebooking, friending me on my personal Facebook page, which is great, but I don't post there, and I'm almost, I'm almost going to be uh, at my 5,000 friend limit and probably won't even be using that. So uh, head over to the Truth With Ben Facebook page and uh, sign up or like or however you do it, and you'll be able to access the videos as well as the tips and all the postings that we do on skincare at the Truth With Ben the Truth With Ben Facebook page. Also, if you're in the Texas area, in Austin, I'll be doing a talk at Brave New Books, 1904 Guadalupe Street, tomorrow night, 7 p.m. That's uh, Austin, Texas, zip code 78705. The next night in Allen, Texas, at the Hilton Garden Inn, 705 Central Expressway South, Allen, Texas. 75013 is the zip code there. All right, got lines open for you, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you've got questions about health, nutrition, or prescription drugs, let us show you how easy it can be to get healthy, to reverse degenerative disease. Wouldn't you rather bolt out of bed in the morning with energy and excitement and a fervor for life? Wouldn't you rather spend your money on a good nutritional supplement program or a vacation or, or something for you than a prescription drug? Then Wouldn't you rather spend time having fun with life rather than waiting in line at the drugstore or waiting in line in the doctor's office or sitting in the waiting room and, and having to figure out what the heck's wrong with your body. That's what, it, that's, what, uh, that's what the medical model is all about. It's about locking us up. It's about taking our money. It's not about making us better. Wouldn't you rather really get better than just maintain your disease state? Wouldn't you rather really be healthy than just be symptom free? Drugs can mask your symptoms. Drugs can hide your symptoms. Of course, they'll replace them with other problems in the long term. Wouldn't you rather be really, really healthy? Let us show you how to do that. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. All right, yesterday we talked about using something called the open focus technique for activating your alpha brainwave states. Hopefully some of you have tried that. Just focusing on your scene, wherever you are, focusing on the, using the outside part of your eyes to focus. I'm doing it right now. It has a relaxing effect on the body. It's called the open focus technique. By the way, there's a really cool book Let me called The Open Focus Brain by Les Femi, F-E-H-M-I. And I got a lot of great ideas from this book. It's all about the opus, open focus technique for activating alpha brainwave states. You can get that off Amazon.com for, for a dollar or two. It's been out for a while. It's a used book. You can get it as a used book. You can also download music or sounds called, that exploit something called binaural beats. Binaural beats are uh, a way of channeling information, um, a way of uh, channeling sound into each ear at a different rate. And by channeling sound into each ear at a different rate, hence the term binaural, you get a different frequency, if you will, into each ear. The brain can process that. If it's done correctly, the brain can process these two sounds and create an alpha state. It can actually resonate to the difference between the frequencies in each ear, and you'll end up in an alpha state. There was a guy named Robert Monroe who wrote a book called Journey. He actually wrote three books. One was called Journeys Out of the Body. Uh, the second was called Far Journeys, and then he wrote one called Ultimate Journeys. And this is a, these are books that are um, super unbelievable, mind-bending books. Robert Monroe was an advertising agent. Uh, advertising executive, I should say. He wrote advertising copy. Super conservative guy. He wasn't, you know, a hippy dippy, wacky kind of guy. He was a suburbanite. And uh, he started having these crazy dreams. 
And in these dreams, he was kind of awake in his dream. I guess we would call them a lucid dream today. But he would travel to different dimensions, if you will. And he wrote all about these. And, and like I say, he was not a radical guy. He wasn't some wild-eyed, hippie, psychedelic, tripping-on-acid type of guy. He was just a middle-class, middle-aged advertising executive with a crew cut who lived in suburbia. And he had he started having these wild dreams. He writes all about in the book. I read the books back in the 1980s completely changed my life and he talks in these dreams about meeting entities if you will and traveling to other dimensions and what he ended up doing was he started to study how to access these states not just when he was falling asleep not just in the in the pseudo dream state but how to access these states whenever he wanted to and he developed these these kinds of techniques these sound techniques which included binaural beats he was the first guy to come out with these binaural beats, and he called his he called his products HemiSync. You may have heard of this, H E M I S Y N C H. You can download HemiSync stuff off the internet. I'm pretty sure you can download them. Certainly, you can get CDs. And there's actually a place called the Robert Monroe Institute in Virginia somewhere, where he trains people. He teaches people how to access these different dimensions and uh, these different experiences by using binaural beats. There's another book written by one of his disciples, a guy who actually, an engineer, super cool engineer, again, not a wild-eyed hippie guy, it's, uh, he's, the guy's probably in his 60s or 70s now, named Thomas Campbell, and there's a lot of good YouTubes from Thomas Campbell, too. If you just Google YouTube and Thomas Campbell, you can get a lot of good information. And Thomas Campbell was an engineer, and he actually developed some of these, some of the, the equipment that would allow people to access these incredible, incredible experiences. And he wrote about it. He, uh, Thomas Campbell also wrote about, uh, wrote about it in these books uh, he calls My Big Toe. T-O-E stands for Theory of Everything. And he, he wrote a book called My Big Toe, which you can buy in abbreviated versions, or you can buy the whole book, My Big Toe. It's somewhat technical, but there's a lot of cool information there. And you can also YouTube some of Thomas Campbell's uh, some of Thomas Campbell's talks and lectures so you can get an idea of what he's talking about. These are all ways to access the alpha state. Everything we're talking about here. Binaural beats, hemisync, open focus, hot showers, natural rhythms, listening to the ocean, moving your body slowly, or watching somebody else move their body slowly. All of these are ways to access the hypnotic alpha state, to kick in, to have the relaxation system kick in. And then we come to the very important relationship between nitric oxide and anxiety. Yes, we are still talking about nitrogen and nitric oxide. Nitric oxide signals emergency to the brain, and it is associated with emergency states. And I'll uh, tell you a little bit about that when we come back from our break. And we'll take your phone calls too. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. All right, thanks for listening, folks. 844-236-6010 is our number. Farhan in Virginia. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning. Hello, Ben. Uh, it's been good to talk to you again. Uh, my first question is about my friend who, when he eats uh, dairy or red meat, he says he gets a pain in his, like, two, uh, two toes, two uh, first <laughs> in- toes, big toe and next to it. Like right away? Uh, I believe right away. I'm not sure what he said exactly, but he just said, I got a pain when I eat that's, food. That's actually really good news, Farhan, because he's experiencing for himself the inflammatory effects of these kinds of foods. Pain in the extremities, fingers, toes, anywhere really, uh, inflammatory pain uh, is a sign that there's inflammation, inflammatory factors getting into the body, and it usually doesn't happen that quickly, but if it happens really quickly like that, that's a really good thing because he can experience the, the results of the foods he's eating for himself. Sometimes when the results take a long time, you know, uh, sometimes the results take an hour, two hours, or three hours, or eight hours uh, to kick in, we don't make that link. We don't relate our experience or our, our, uh, our symptoms to the foods that we're eating. But this guy is lucky. He's actually seeing right away for himself the relationship between the foods he's eating and symptoms in his body. So obviously, uh, you know, those are foods that he wants to eliminate. He may want to try using them if he absolutely has to use them. You know, he absolutely, absolutely has to have dairy or whatever it is. He may want to try some digestive enzymes, the ultimate enzymes, for example, or the bioluminite nightly essence to help him process these kinds of foods. But best just eliminate them totally. If you like ferment, if you like dairy, use fermented dairy. Get on the, the Amasai or the Swear V products from Jordan Rubin, the Beyond Organic products. You can find out all about those at brightsideben.com. I did a Swear V fast yesterday. All I, ate, all I had was Swear V. 
It's a great way to fast, and you'll get the benefits of dairy. Jordan uh, breeds cattle that don't have the some of the allergens and, and uh, toxins, not toxins really, but allergens in the uh, that are found in regular dairy, and toxins too, because Jordan's dairy products are, uh, they don't have, uh, the cattle don't have antibiotics and hormones, etc. So if he does like dairy, try to use the, the Jordan Rubin products. You know what else you can get, Farhan, or your friend can get, mm-hmm. is, is almond milk or coconut almond milk. There's actually a brand, and I forgot the name of it, I'll have to find out what it is. There's a brand of coconut almond milk, or even regular plain unsweetened almond milk. Milk. It tastes delicious. It's unsweetened. You'll get all the benefits of almonds, which include calcium and protein, and you won't have to worry about the the problems all associated with cattle, the uh, dairy cattle, or with milk itself. So almond milk, coconut almond milk, you can buy those at a health food store. Those are good alternatives. And of course, the Jordan Rubin fermented dairy products are always a good choice, especially the fermented cheese. I love that. Um, or he can just totally eliminate those kinds of foods. Does that, does that help you, Farhan? It does. Um, so if he does get on some digestive aids, it may uh, help. will it reduce it? Uh, I can't say for sure because I don't know what's causing the problem, but it's definitely something to try. And by the way, just as an aside, you probably heard me say this before, but for new listeners, uh, digestive enzymes, the ultimate enzymes from longevity, can help you with inflammatory pain in addition to being obviously important for the digestive system. They can help you. They have anti-inflammatory and blood thinning effects, too. So there are multiple benefits with uh, the ultimate enzymes from longevity. What else, buddy? Another question is when to supplement because uh, I have so many supplements that I take, creatine. Divide the uh, doses. Everything. D- well, creatine is a little different. You want to use your creatine when you come home from the gym or after a workout. That's the best time to do protein. That's the best time to do creatine. A couple things about that. It's always good to do building supplements, protein, creatine, B vitamins, minerals, etc., essential fatty acids when you're done with your workout. All right, And you want to work out on an empty stomach, ideally. And first thing in the morning, first thing in the morning, you get a surge of cortisol. And cortisol, while we, you know, we rip on long-term secretion of cortisol as a way that our body breaks, as a, a cause for the body breaking down, surges of cortisol in the morning, number one, wake you up. That's why sometimes people will wake up at 4, four o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning and they can't go back to sleep. It's because they get a surge of morning cortisol. This is normal. And it's designed, you know, this is the way the body has been structured, so it wakes up. You get a surge of cortisol, but you can take advantage of that surge of cortisol in the morning to get a better workout. Also, if you work out on an empty stomach, you'll find that uh, your body will be burning that fat, burning fat more readily, uh, and you'll find that you're losing weight more easily. And then when you come home, that's when you do protein, that's when you do your fats, and that's when you do your creatine and other building nutrients, whatever you're doing. Then... As far as your question goes, when to do your supplements, you want to do your supplement. You want to, uh, the best way to do your supplements is in divided doses throughout the day. That's the best way. If you can do it three times a day, divide your supplements into three doses. That's great. Even two doses is great. You try not to. If you're taking a lot of supplements, it's probably not a good idea to do them all at once. And then, of course, your water-soluble supplements, uh, B complex, vitamin C, and the electrolytes, you want to do throughout the day, beyond tangy tangerine, especially throughout the day. Thanks, Farhan. If you've got any, anything else, hang tight. I'll, I'll come back to you after our break. I'm Farm Ben. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to the Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Farhan in Virginia, what else you got for me, buddy? Yeah, thank you so much for answering all my questions. I do sure. definitely have more. I'll call again, for sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, one thing is, <laughs> thanks. Um, I'm taking arginine tablets right now. Okay. Would it be better to switch to the tablets? And also, I have a question on, um, uh, I guess I have a sore throat or something that feels like it. Uh, Best thing? It kind of hurts in the back of my throat. I've been there for like a week. Best thing for a sore throat is zinc lozenges. Suck on those zinc lozenges. Make sure you're not taking more than 50 milligrams of zinc a day. If you take too much zinc, you can actually cause your skin to break out and, and actually cause problems. And you don't want to take too much zinc. Pretty much minerals are all like that. You don't want to take too much of certain minerals. Zinc, you don't want to take too much of. Selenium, you don't want to take too much of. Iron, you definitely don't want to take too much of. Uh, So 50 milligrams a day of zinc is where you want to top off, and you want to suck on zinc lozenges. They're really amazing for sore throats. Uh, I mean, really amazing. Uh, Almost, you'll be be blown away by how fast you can heal a sore throat. Suck on the lozenges. And then as far as arginine goes, the powder is much more cost-effective than tablets. I think that's what you meant, uh, correct? Switching to, to the powder? Is that what you were talking or about? Or just, is it more effective? Because I talked to you about acne before, and you said 
the powder, and I have the tablets. So I'm not sure which one to take. Well, you can still take. You can still use the tablets. They're just not as cost effective. The tableting process, and also you're going to get excipients that you're not going to get in powder. Uh, in the powder, I always like powders where they're available rather than tablets or capsules. That's my Great. my preference. And so I shouldn't take zinc picolinate 50 milligrams if I'm going to do the uh, zinc. Well, I'll just top off at 50 milligrams, maybe 60 or so. But you don't want to take too much more than 50 milligrams. Maybe for a day or two, it's not a big deal, but not for long term. I think zinc lozenges maybe get, get you five or 10 milligrams of zinc. So if you do two or three of those a day, maybe skip a day of your of your zinc picolinate. Okay, and do the sore throats just go away naturally? Yes, or? absolutely, they'll go away unless you got a you know serious problem. But no, for the most part, they'll go away. How's your skin doing, by the way, Farhan, with all these things you've been doing? Um, that's all right. I mean, I have milia under my eyes, so that's okay. A Are you doing vitamin A? Well, I'm You're doing t- the Beyond Chemical Injury. I don't know. Throw, throw in twenty thousand IU of vitamin A a day. You shouldn't have milia. You're too young. You sound like you're in your th- yeah. not even in your 30s, are you? I, I'm 20. I'm 20 years old. I'm oh, you're way too young for milia, bro. That's for old people. No, I don't mean oh, old really? people. Older people. And also for people who have had a gallbladder removed. So if you have a milia, that's a, that is a significant sign. Milia, for the listeners, are little hard white bumps that show up on your skin. Sometimes they'll show up in the upper arms. You want to consider it to be a problem with fat absorption or fat intake. You may not be getting enough. And by fat, I mean fatty vitamins and essential fatty acids, especially vitamin A. In fact, some folks will notice relief from milia uh, simply by, number one, taking in vitamin A, 20,000 IU a day. There's not enough uh, for this in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You've got to go out and get uh, extra vitamin A. Uh, Or apply vitamin A cream or gel to the skin. And I'm going to be coming out with my uh, retinol. The Truth products will have a retinol product, which is vitamin A. Uh, And you can use that, too, when the Truth products come out. You may want to order that. Uh, or uh, you have to get a prescription otherwise for something called retinoic acid. Farhan, i got to move on. i got a bunch of calls here. Okay, buddy? Thanks, bud. Thank you so much for your call, and uh, have a great day. Patricia, welcome to the Bright Side. What's going on? Hi, Ben. I have a granddaughter who is about to have her second child, and she... Wait a minute. You're a great-grandmom, Patricia? I am. Oh, my God. You sound so young. You must have started early. I did. Well, congratulations. Uh, Thank you. The deal is, that she, her first baby, when it came, she had a horrible, terrible birth. Okay. The baby wouldn't turn over, wouldn't come out. They had to oh. go in, you know. And so she's just so concerned that she says, I've already scheduled myself for a C-section. Oh. That's of my due date. And I don't know enough. I've heard a little bit, but I need a body of information that I can give her on what she is doing to the baby by doing no, With that. a C-section? Yes. Well, here's the, the deal. When babies. the baby, when babies are born, they come out of the birth canal. They get bathed in this coating of bacteria, and uh, slime almost. And the slime contains bacteria that the mom produces in her in her the, the birth canal. And as the baby is passing through, all those bacteria are coating the baby. They're getting in the baby's nose. They're getting in the baby's mouth. And uh, as they're getting into the baby's into the baby's nose and mouth, they're they're traveling down into the digestive tract, and then they're implanting in the baby's digestive tract. And from that point, those bacteria become kind of a seed or precipitating factor for new bacteria to to thrive and to proliferate inside the baby's gut. So the mother the, the birth process includes as part of the birth process an inoculation. It, it includes a, an injection of bacteria of probiotic bacteria in the baby's gut, and C-section babies don't get that. And that means for the future of that baby's life, for the rest of that baby's life, that baby is going to be deprived of those precipitating, proliferating bacteria that are supposed to seed the, uh, the digestive tract with probiotics. And that is very, very unfortunate for the baby's immune system, for the baby's ability to grow and produce uh, and uh, uh, mature the digestive tract, for the baby's uh, ability to protect itself from microbes, etc. For, for vitamin D production, B-complex production, these bacteria in the gut are incredibly important. They're the beginnings of health, and C-section babies don't get those. Another thing that happens with C-section babies is the mom's signals to produce um, breast milk effectively don't get signaled. One of, the, one of the ways that the body knows to produce breast milk is by the, the passage of the baby through the birth canal. Again, when C-section occurs, that doesn't happen. So baby's going to be deprived of probiotics. Mother is not going to be making her milk as effectively. Baby will be deprived of growth factors that are found in breast milk. It's not a good idea. It's a bad idea. It's more manipulation of the body by the medical model. So 
if she wants to do a C-section, you know, God love her, but at least have her make sure that she's really making sure that the body's digestive system is working, cor- that the baby's digestive system is working correctly, maybe get some infant pro- probiotics as soon as the baby can do fermented food. That would be helpful. And make sure mom absolutely, absolutely is using good nutrition. And if she's got any food intolerances or food allergies, make sure mom is not eating foods that spark up her immune system because that will mess up the baby too, make the baby more predisposed to immune reactions, food intolerances, food allergies, baby's uh, ability to extract energy from food may be compromised. That will set the baby up for blood sugar problems, ultimately adrenal problems. It's just not a good thing. But if she is going to do uh, the C-section, have her make sure, absolutely, absolutely sure she's not interfacing or interacting with any food inflammatory factors. She's correcting all her digestive problems. And she's using probiotic supplements and eating fermented foods. And mom is on a good protein supplement. And mom is on the Longevity Healthy Start Pack and other good nutritional supplements. So she's healthy. And then the breast milk will be better. At least you'll be able to mitigate some of the effects of the C-section. Does that help you, Patricia? It helps tremendously. And, and don't now, forget essential fats, by the way, omega-3 essential fats. Please make sure mom is supplementing with omega-3 essential fats. They're incredibly important for baby's brain, uh, for baby's a- uh, hand-eye coordination, for baby's vision, for baby's uh, n- n- nerve nerve health. Uh, tremendously important that mom is on the ultimate EFAs and getting her omega-3 fats. What else, Patricia? Do you think that oil, fish oil, is the best kind yes. of EFA? Well, uh, the ultimate EFAs and then maybe some fish oil, too, yeah, and fish in general. Okay. Now, where can she hear this uh, on the radio so I can She can archive it. uh, She can listen to the archives at benfuchsarchives.com or brightsideben.com. Or you can send me an email, and if you put your phone number in there, I'll get back to you, and then I can talk to her personally. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you, and congratulations. R.C., what is up? R.C. in Santa Cruz, is that you? It is. Hey, hey what's going on, RC? Good to talk to you. It's nice to talk with you always and listen to you every day, you know. Thank I, you. You know, you're talking about dividing your doses. How do you yeah. divide the capsules and the capsules? Well, one capsule. Well, I don't mean dividing the capsule. I mean, div- if you're taking four capsules a day, say you're taking, uh, say you're taking uh, uh, 50, mil- you're doing your, uh, uh, your protein, for example, say you're, you're trying to get maybe 100 grams of protein a day. Do 30 grams in the morning, 30 grams in the afternoon, 30 grams at night. Say you're doing 12 essential fatty acids, ultimate EFAs a day. Do three in the morning, three in the afternoon, three at night. See what I'm saying? You don't divide the individual capsules. You divide the doses in terms of the multiple capsules or multiple scoops that you're doing, whatever the supplement is. So 12 capsules will be... Got... Go ahead. Pardon me. Go ahead. 12 capsules would be 4, 4, 4. 100 grams of protein would be 30, 30, 33, 33, 33 kind of thing. You follow me? Well, I understand that, but whatever, like you're taking a B-complex 100. Well, you're not no. going to be able to divide that, but you should take three B-complex 100s, and then you do one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one at night. Oh, so that's not over... No, no, no. Water-soluble nutrients are urinated out. The B-complex, vitamin C, and electrolytes you can't overdose on. The fat-soluble nutrients you theoretically can, but you got to take way. For, from, from a practical standpoint, you really can't. Minerals you got to be a little bit careful of. Most mineral, uh, a lot of minerals, selenium, sulfur, zinc, iodine, iron. You don't want to take too much of those. All right, RC, you got to move on. Thank you so much for your call. Call back tomorrow if you got more questions. That's all the time we have for today on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out my website, Bright. Ben.com and click on the join the team link and join me in my mission to help educate the world about how powerful a good nutritional supplement program can be. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Have yourselves a spectacular, wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.